Hello guys, in this video I'm going to quickly talk about animation support within GenCG and Compix Dash. Now GenCG and Dash do support animations in the form of image sequences and once you have GenCG open you would go to insert and then animation. And within the animation folder down below under files of type you have uh, two animation formats that we support. GPF and TAD. These animation formats are for Compix family only, so through After Effects or another animation software, you're not able to export it as these formats. So what you're going to need to do is export it as an image sequence, and when you go to Insert Animation, change the files of type to image files. And within, note that we support Targa, PMG, Bitmap, and JPEG image sequences. I would suggest uh, exporting it as a 32-bit Targa so um, the sequence can be uncompressed and um, it does have an alpha channel as well. Now, I do have an uh, image sequence that I can import for you right here. And when I preview it, notice that it's not an entire canvas of 1920 by 1080. Um, the composition size is kind of reduced and that is so I can move the animation around within GenCG. So let me click on the first frame of my animation and I'm going to click on open. And GenCG is going to ask me a couple of questions when I do this. The first is if I want to create the same name as the image sequence. So I'm going to select yes and now the sequence will import. Now that my animation sequence is done importing, it's going to ask me if I wanted to delete the original files. And I'm going to press no on this. And after pressing no, um, here is the animation that I have. So because the uh, canvas size of the animation was not full 1920 by 1080 for my respective resolution, I'm able to now move my animation around and position it accordingly. And after doing so, if I were to left click to select the animation, Notice within attributes below, I have an animation loop that I could set. Now the default loop is one, which means the animation will run, and then when it reaches the last frame, it'll hold and then transition out with the rest of the, the graphics on your page. So I could select one, I could select any number of animated loops, or I could select zero, which is infinite and zero would be great for bugs that you'd want to just infinitely loop if you like. So let me uh, select one. And before inserting my text for the animation, I am going to change my page mode. Now within GenCG you have different page modes that you could set and the default page mode is still above. Now if I were to select still, then if I were to choose an effect, it would apply to the entire page. And by default, when you import animations within GenCG, if it's set to still, then the animation will always be on the foreground. So that's great for animated bugs or so forth, but if you have background animations or animated lower thirds where you'd want to type the text in your CG editor, then it still wouldn't be good. So what you would select is for the GenCG page mode, you would select multi-layer. And now with multi-layer selected, I could go ahead and type text on top of my object and to do that I'm going to right click and then left click on my object and now I could type so I'll go ahead and type in my name and after doing that uh, let's go ahead and play the animation now so I'm going to click on play one time to bring it to preview and I'm going to select play one time to bring it to program and notice the animation comes in, it looks pretty good, but the text comes in with the animation. And we don't really want that. We want the text to be delayed until the animation dissolves in and, and slides in. So to do that, I'm going to click on the text. And notice within effects, you have in, object, and out. And uh, if your page mode is set to multi-layer, 
then you could set individual transition effects for objects that are within your page. So if I wanted to dissolve the text in, then I'm going to select F, which is a little more than halfway down um, within the effects, and F stands for fade. So I'm going to fade this in, and the first number after object is the transition time, which is one second. So if I wanted to dissolve it in for 20 frames or, or 15 frames, then that's about half a second right there, a little more. And after doing that, you have a second group of numbers right here, which is 0, 0.0. Now, this number represents the delay until you want the text to come in. So I know that when I created this in After Effects, the animation comes in, it, it slides in, and I have an opacity set for about 15 to 20 frames. So I'm going to delay the text about to 0.8 and then I'm going to have it dissolve in. So now when I press play, everything happens uh, seamlessly. So it looks pretty good on the output. Now what you'll need to do next is set an out transition. So what GenCG does is it takes the animation and it just plays it. And when the animation reaches the last frame, it'll it'll dissolve out or transition out the animation with the rest of your page. So um, I could click on out and let me just select fade for that and let me bump the fade down to 0.6 as well. And now when I play it the animation will come in and when I want to transition out the page I will click on play and then the uh, animation would transition out. And that pretty much concludes the majority of how GenCG treats animations. So if you have further questions, you can contact us at sales at compix.tv or support at compix.tv. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.